Hey everyone, it's Leandra from Lexington Facility at New Vocations Resource Adoption Program. Julie and I are going to bring you guys along during dinner time here at New Vocations. And we'll talk a little bit about what goes into the food because I think something that a lot of people have questions about or struggle with is feeding your recently off the track thoroughbred with time. Any of them can, of course, adjust and their metabolism will slow down. But we're talking about hyper, hyper athletes who are asked to push their bodies to the absolute extremes. So in order to do that, they're used to being fed lots and lots of grain and getting massive amounts of nutrition to help them do that. So when they're done with their career on the track, we of course need to help them transition. So first and foremost, their base of your diet is going to of course be your forage. So grass and hay, uh, where we don't have the hay in the feed room, uh, we keep it in the loft so you're not seeing it here, but then we feed Tribute Calm Ultra. Something I like about this grain is that it has 12% protein and 12% fat. It also has 12% fiber. So I like to look for something that has at least equal parts protein and fat. A lot of the times the horses on the track are getting grain that is much higher in protein and has very small amounts of fat since they need that quick burn energy. But in the long term, as we're asking them to slow down their metabolism and build those fat reserves so that they have that bloom that we ask of our sport horses for other disciplines, so like that nice fat hunter look, um, and that more filled out look, especially as they continue to grow, age, develop, mature, they're going to need a little bit more help since they don't need to just have that streamlined speed anymore. So I like to look for that fat and protein and a little bit of a higher fiber so that they can slow down that burn rate and really get those reserves. So let me just show you a few other things in our arsenal here. We're really lucky to have the support of Haggard's team. So we use, if we think a horse has ulcers, the gastric support Reline GI, which also has joint support. But for some horses who just might need the select joint support, we have that as well. In the summer, we feed a combination of brewer's yeast, which we have quite a bit of, which is a great source of vitamin B, as well as a uh, garlic that's designed for horses. It's important not to just feed, thanks Julie, uh, garlic sort of willy-nilly because you can actually create toxic amounts um, in their system. So get something that's designed for horses and follow the instructions. Uh, we also will put in apple cider vinegar. We usually, uh, we have a organic one that we put in their food because we also use apple cider vinegar on their bodies externally. It helps to create that shine, repel flies, has a lot of purposes. You'll see some of the other things that we use, um, not in our general routine, but sort of selectively. We have ground flax, um, cool calories, we have our well pride oil. We've also used rice bran oil before. We're working with well pride at looking at select horses to take pictures and document how they change over the course of um, 30, 60, 90 days when they've been on it. So hopefully we'll have some good results for you. And then Mare Magic is a great thing to try. It's pretty cheap for quite a bit of it. And um, I think some people don't realize you can use it on geldings as well. So you're talking about having horses who are going through a massive hormonal change phase in their life. Sometimes they just need a little help. Sometimes it works for horses. Sometimes it doesn't. But it's a relatively risk-free investment to try and see if it works to just regulate their hormones a little bit. So we keep track of everybody's grain here. We list things in scoops, but we know for our purposes that a scoop is about three pounds. So you're talking about having two scoops AM and PM as a baseline. Um, you'll see some horses have more than that and some are getting a lunch as well. So you're talking 
if every scoop is about three pounds when you measure it out, then you're talking about 12 pounds a day. And some horses are getting more than that. So 12 to 15, some need lunch as well. We try to space it out as much as we can because we know that you don't want to feed too many concentrates at the same time. But it these horses are used to getting massive, massive amounts of grain, so you're not likely to overload them. Obviously, in the long term, you really want to be able to reduce that amount for your pocketbook and also for their digestive health. But in keeping up with their metabolism, in the meantime, we feed them this amount. You can also maximize your calorie intake with fewer concentrates by using things like oil or the cool calories or something like that. So that's the basics of it. Because we have supplements that not every horse gets, um, we have mixed them up into buckets. Makes it easier to keep track of. We prepare the buckets ahead of time and then they actually hang up on those hooks in the wall so that it's prepared and it minimizes any confusion. If a horse needs butte or SMZs, say they have a cut and we're trying to treat that, then they have a little, um, they have little like Ziploc brand tubs here that will mix up uh, the SMZs. The, the, oftentimes you're getting tabs, the tabs dissolve really nicely and we'll put a scoop of butte or a gram uh, in with those tubs and put them in there so that they can be mixed in. If the horse doesn't like it that way, you can get these big 60 cc oral syringes. Those are single use. You'd wanna dispose of that or if it gets dirty, chuck it. Um, so, that's the basics of it. Let's go ahead and deliver them their dinner. If anybody has any questions along the way too, feel free to type them in the comments box. See that Irvin asked. <laughs> Lots of excited voices here now. <laughs> um, the vinegar we use in their grain as a predominantly a seasonal fly repellent that's a feed through. We use it externally for treating things like fungus, helping their coat shine. There are so many different purposes uh, or benefits of using apple cider vinegar that um, I probably couldn't explain all of them here, but it's, it's a really good multi-purpose tool. So uh, really easy to find. So it's, it's a good thing to try. Nice, happy horses. This is every day is a holiday. Enjoying his meal. It's a good thing to keep track of also. Um, we have these little hey, feed through. Many of our horses feed are fed in little corner buckets. Some have ground feeders, but we can also sort of keep track of who is more protective of their grain. And he's just very, very engaged in his meal. So when I try to touch his forehead, he's acting surprised. But you see, he's uh, a little annoyed that I'm right here, but he's happy to receive the green. This is pretentious. He says, I like to act grumpy. But he's I'm very hungry right now. Eating his meal up. In and Companion, one of our champion eaters. So this is a horse who had ulcers when he came to us. And we treated him with reline, had him rescoped so we could see the progress and everything. And you can see he's at a point now. You can't see his ribs. He's got mo much more of a shine. He had a really dull coat before. This is a really big improvement for him. And uh, he used to kind of pick at his food, whereas now he finishes his meals. He's a very slow eater, though. So it's important to recognize those sort of things because it's not that he won't finish his grain, but he likes to just take his time. So every horse is an individual. We have to remember to treat them that way because some will eat at different rates. And um, you just have to kind of give him his time to finish that. Dr. Door here, you can see he, he came with this really nice, he just naturally has that dappled coat, but he has a massive barrel. And you can see even, um, it's not really apparent from all angles, but you can see, we can still see his ribs a little bit there. And he's working on getting that belly, but the ribs will go away when they finally slow down their metabolism to the point that they can really use those fat reserves well. Um, it'll start to show, so they have to meet those internal fat capacity to, sh to show it on the outside. So he still just burns right through it. Um, you know, he's in turnout most of the time now. He's rehabbing from some suspensory desmitis. 
and um, that can just take a little bit of time. It's hot, they'll be stomping at flies, so he actually gets a uh, lunch, and we bumped up his food, and he gets the well pride oil, so um, he's really working on that. And you'll see also he's kind of using his hay like bedding at the moment, but they all always have hay in their stall. We have a um, grass mix, and we like to have alfalfa. At this point in the season, we just buy extra alfalfa to help them out because it's uh, with the first cut, we didn't get as much alfalfa in our grain, but you can always supplement that. Um, this lady stopped shopping, sorry, stopped spending Maria. Um, Stop spending Maria 2017. She just came to us. This is another great example of a horse who's just been turned out. So she's um, gotten a lot of forage. You can see she has a belly, but you can still see her ribs. Um, so she just came recently, like I said. So we're helping her build up some of those fat reserves. We add fat to her grain and that will help to fill in those ruby spots. But horses who are mostly on pasture, especially young ones who still have maybe higher metabolisms naturally or just ones who are growing so much. She's huge. It might be hard to tell in the video, but she's a really, really big girl. So um, when they're growing a lot like that, they can go through these different phases of sort of slimming out and everything. So that's what we're going with for her. Um, this lovely lady has been with us a little bit longer and just made it over to training. Her name's Our Magic Cat 2016. Really, really excited to have her in training because she could not be a sweeter horse. Um, hello, what you doing? It's hard to kind of see her. Hello. No, oh, thank you. You share a new grain with me. And then also a really good thing to pay attention to is if you have a horse who's dropping a lot of grain, isn't finishing their grain, losing weight, just check their teeth. It, it's really simple to, um, if you use a couple, like your index and your middle finger, you can sort of run it up the sides of their mouths. You can feel the premolars. You won't be able to feel all the way back, most likely. But if those premolars are sharp, that's a pretty good indicator that they need their teeth done. So make sure you check those. And then with the younger horses, we're looking generally at every six months getting their teeth done. Um, and then as they get older, you can kind of go to a once a year routine. Here's all I need, scarfing down her food. That's one to look out for who might be going up on the website very soon. And then Miss Naggedy Ann, she has a ground feeder. who else we can see here. Any other questions? Silverbank, another one to look out for coming up online soon. She's a really, really sweet, more petite, smaller build, dark bay. But she's got a nice wither to her. She probably stands around 15.2 or 15.3. She's relatively new to us, but she's been so, so easy to work with in training. Really, really nice personality. And she actually took a little bit more time to adjust to eating a bit more too. Um, she just had other things on her mind. She wanted to go hang out and play. She didn't really care so much for that, but she ate a lot of grass. So we wanted to, you know, obviously get her to scarf down as much as she could. Miss Golden Annie, she just came back from getting a tumor removed from her ovary. Hey, Cranky. Um, this is a horse that our chiropractor previously had said was obese. <laughs> You can see she um, is working on getting a little more groceries now. She, but when she wasn't feeling good, she started to kind of not look good. Um, and she maintained more of her um, thoracic sort of girth, but not so much her hind end. She's really lacking in muscle in her hind end. And so now as she's starting to get turned out and just starting to get back into that working mode, that... Um, she is having a better appetite and a better attitude and we're working on all of that. So here we go. We've got feed time. You've learned a little bit of the basics of how we do things here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the comments box even after we end this video. And that's the basics of how we run things. Thank you so much for tuning in today for Trainer Tip Tuesday. This is feed time. And we hope to see you again tomorrow for our virtual tour on Wednesday. So thank you so much again. We'll see you next time. Bye.